Welcome to The Balancing Act. I'm Julie Moran. And I'm Olga Villaverde. All right, good, great news, actually, yes. for those with bunions. A new 3D approach to surgery. That is so great. It is. Plus, a simple way to help you fill prescriptions. That's right, and actually really good when it comes to cost, too. And understanding sleep apnea. There are some new advancements in treatment. We're going to learn more uh, from someone who unfortunately knows just how important it is to get help. Plus, a visit to a really cool New York hotel. And The Balancing Act starts right now. It's a common problem, but probably not something you'd think about until it affects you. We're talking about bunions. They can be painful and really embarrassing. Traditional 2D bunion surgery, known as a bunionectomy or osteotomy surgery, has several drawbacks. But now, there's a new 3D option, 3D, that's getting to the root cause and helping patients get back on their feet much quicker. Here with all the info is orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Robert Santrock and his patient, Ann Oxley. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being here. All right, so doctor, let me start with you. Uh, first, tell me exactly what is a bunion and what causes it? Let's start there. Well, traditionally people think bunions are caused by shoes or some sort of activity, right. but it's not. You're actually going to inherit the problem and then maybe shoes might make it worse. So it's genetic, but you can exacerbate it through life. Exactly. Okay. And it's not a bump, it's more than a bump. It's actually a corner between the toe bone and the foot bone. And so what you're looking at, what looks like a bump that traditionally has been just lopped off in surgery, is really a corner. And that is mechanically is a problem. And that's why bunions hurt. Okay, now these traditional surgeries that are 2D, uh, why aren't they getting to the root of the problem? What is the problem with that procedure? The problem is, is you're just shaving a bump off or shifting the bump underneath the toe and it just makes it look like it's gone. But the root cause is further up in the foot and where an unstable joint is and where that unstable joint is, the toe bone then drifts out of alignment. Oh. And this is why if you don't treat it there, it's gonna come back. So if you have this surgery, uh, and I know my husband had one years ago, I, I think he's doing okay, what are, what are the chances of recurrence? Traditional 2D surgery can recur up to 70% of the time. 70%? Exactly. Why would anybody do it with those odds? Well, it's exactly why we went into looking for a better option. Okay, so um, let's bring you in, Ann. Okay. What happened? Where was your bunion? Show me, well, first tell me where, what foot? It's on my right foot. Okay, the right foot, where? Right there. Look how personal we're getting. I know. <laughs> this area? <laughs> yes. Yeah, my daughter has it right here as well. Just like the doctor said, it's probably because of my husband. She has no pain, not yet. Uh, tell me about how yours was. Uh, was it huge? It I painful? felt like mine was big. My son it told looked me. Big to yes, you. it looked big to me. It looked big to my son, who told me I needed to wear a sock or slippers every time <laughs> he saw it because it was so ugly. Oh my gosh. It was, we love to travel. We're active. My kids are in travel sports and it just started to get painful. I couldn't wear my cute shoes. I was constantly trying to find a pair of comfortable shoes, and even that wasn't helping. Very common, that's what I hear from a lot of people. Uh, doctor, so let's talk about this new procedure, which you invented. It's called uh, Lapoplasty 3D Bunion Correction. You did it on Anne. First, tell me uh, about the surgery. I think we have an animation that we could show our viewers. Let's roll that and tell me exactly what you do differently as opposed to the 2D. So the surgery essentially works further up in the foot to correct the long bones of the foot and realign them in a three-dimensional way. This aligns the great toe joint and allows it to function more normally. So essentially we are uniting two bones together in the middle of the foot away from where the bump is, but it makes the bump disappear and the line of the toe look normal. Would you mind painting the picture here for us with this um, little model that you have? This model here shows the tools that we used in surgery to help align the, the foot correctly. Remember I told you there's a long bone here, mm -hmm. that's the one that's out of alignment, and we want to make it aligned with these other bones in the foot. And so we use this device here to help roll and pitch the toe back into proper alignment. This makes the bump go away and the toe align straight with the foot. All right. And this is done internally afterwards with these two small plates these titanium plates, low profile, they're designed this way because they add a lot of stability. And that was purposeful for us to allow patients to get on their feet quickly. So the different hardware, different technique allowed for a quicker recovery than traditional surgery. Where our surgery, we intended to design so you can walk immediately. Now that's protected walking in a cam boot or a protective walking boot for six weeks. But 
that was the whole purpose. We did not want people in crutches for a long period of time. That disrupts your life way too much. We had to have you essentially having a fairly normal life after surgery. Now, you said with 2D surgery, there was a 70% chance of recurrence, which is ridiculous. Uh, what about with this surgery? 3%. 3%? Yes. Oh, those are great odds. I'd play that in Vegas. Okay, so, big question. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I am back to all my normal pre-surgery activities. About a little after a week that I had surgery, my son had a wrestling tournament. I was up and down the stadium oh. watching him in my boot. And then after I got my boot off in six weeks, I started back to the gym and normal activities. Doctor, any last minute thoughts before we uh, leave? We really want people to know that bunion surgery is not something to be embarrassed about. Go talk to your doctor. Mm -hmm. There are new options now that are far better. And if you would like to have more information, you can go to alignmytoe.com and there you can find all the information you need to look and see if you're a candidate for lapoplasty surgery. All right, alignmytoe.com. Fantastic. Thank you so much, doctor. No embarrassments of showing off your feet now, right? Cute shoes. I love it. Thank you so much. I'm glad you're back on track. And if you'd like more information on this surgery, again, it's lapoplasty 3D bunion correction surgery. You can go to alignmyto.com or just go to our website, thebalancingact.com. I tell you what I'm a way to ease the burden of prescription refills and here's Olga with more. An estimated 45% of all Americans are living with chronic health conditions which affect them every single day. And with that comes managing multiple doctor appointments, medical bills, and medications. Relief, at least when it comes to your prescriptions, is on the way. Maya Loveland of Simple Fill Prescription Assistance is here to help us out. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Appreciate you being here because let me tell you, this is a problem. And Listen to this statistic. This is just what makes it more frustrating. 91% of all prescriptions that are filled are for chronic conditions. Now that's a high percentage. Uh, what issues arise for these patients where they get so frustrated? Well, we hear mostly about the cost. Of course. Yeah, another statistic is prescription drugs account for more than 20% of all healthcare costs these days. My goodness. Yeah, so you know, we're speaking to patients all day long who have been prescribed multiple life-saving medications, uh, which can be incredibly overwhelming when it comes to managing their refills and their co-pays. And of course, that being said, if they don't have adequate financial resources, it's Impossible. It's, it's impossible. What can be done to ease their burden? Well, it's really important for people to know there are programs that are available for them. But you hear a program and you go, oh my gosh, this is complicated. Absolutely. Right? So, yes, and that is the biggest thing is it's very difficult to navigate through. Uh, but that's why we're here. So mm -hmm. we try to streamline the process and remove as much of the burden as possible for both the patient and the caretaker. We do every step, so we work directly with the patient, their prescriber, um, get the paperwork that we need from them to get them into the programs, and then we work directly with the pharmaceutical companies, the foundations, discount pharmacies that offer great pricing for patients. Um, and then we don't stop there. We actually have developed a proprietary system that allows our fulfillment team to keep on top of all these refills that we have for the patients. Oh my gosh. Yeah, we take care of all of that. And then we also need to keep all of their enrollment into these programs current. So that's another thing that we're on top of. Um, and then we also, there's changes that are constantly happening to the prescription assistance programs. So we make sure to keep our patients up to date on all those changes. So let's say someone's interested, they go to Simple Phil, how does it work? Well, the first step is to get an application going. You can do this on our website or just give us a call. And one of our team members will go over your list of medications, uh, learn about your situation with your income and your level of insurance. And then they'll look into all of our resources that we work with. And then once they can see that we will be able to provide savings to you based on what your current situation is, we then enroll you into the program. You know, each patient that comes to us is unique, mm -hmm. so every enrollment process is a little different. Uh, but the one constant for all of the people that come into our program and become members is that we're guaranteeing a savings compared to what their current situation is. Your company's been around for a decade, right? Mm -hmm. uh, tell me what you're most proud of when it comes to the company. Oh, that's so easy. It, definitely our customer service. It's very important that people know that we're accessible and available. They can give us a call. So many of our members have been with us for years, and I think that's the highest compliment you can get. For our viewers who'd like more information on Simple Fill, where do they go, Maya? Go to our website, 
um, or which is simplefill.com, or just give us a call. Fantastic. Thank you so much for Thank what you, you do. Appreciate your time. And to become a member of Simple Fill, just head to the website, like she said, simplefill.com, or you can always just go to our website, thebalancingact.com. Check it out. Obstructive sleep apnea, or OSA, can be a debilitating and dangerous disease. Millions worldwide have died from this. Tragically, my next guest lost his first wife to OSA. Brian Ferry joins us to talk about his loss and amazing new advancements that are helping those who suffer from OSA. Also joining us is Dr. Dean Rayo, who is a dentist. Uh, welcome to both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Brian, first of all, I'm, I'm so sorry for your loss. Thank you. Um, how old was your wife? What was her name? Carrie was 44 when she passed away. Oh my gosh, yeah. what happened? So Carrie had been diagnosed with obstructive sleep apnea for about 15 years. Okay. We never really thought it was a problem. She had other things that she was suffering from and took medications for those things. So she would probably go through, because uh, I, I know my father had it for a while, where she wakes up in the middle of the oh, night yeah. and it's gasping for air, yeah, like you're was, having almost a heart attack. Yeah, it was horrifying, yeah. just, just watching her sleep. Uh, was horrifying because I, I would literally watch her stop breathing oh. and you know I'd have to wake her up or whatever but yeah that night she she had taken some medications for some of the other conditions and uh, she went into what's called an op opioid induced coma essentially and so her brain was very settled and, and asleep mm -hmm. and when she stopped breathing from sleep apnea just she just simply didn't start again so she just passed away peacefully and how did you find her? I mean, you, you know, that morning was just like any other morning. Uh, I got up at six o'clock. I took my son to school, went to the coffee shop, got home. You thought she was sleeping? Oh yeah, I thought she was asleep. And and my three-year-old was actually in bed with her. Oh, and uh, when I finally realized that something was wrong, I went upstairs around nine thirty. And and uh, when I opened the door, my little girl says, "Daddy, mo mommy's cold, and she won't wake up." And, and I, of course, uh, instantly knew. And oh, my God. It, it was horrifying, horrifying. What a horrible, dark moment for you. Yeah. Um, I know because of that experience and everything you experienced through the years with your wife with the sleep apnea, you've become a crusader to help others, and God bless you for that. Uh, your title, I, I love it, is a chief evangelist, <laughs> uh, educating people. How, what does that mean to you, and what are you trying to do? You know, the... It, most people are a lot like me. Well, 87% of the people in this country that, that have OSA are undiagnosed. Mm -hmm. They have no idea they mm -hmm. have it. And they think it's and, no big deal. And the people that do know, it's, you know, it's snoring. And, and, and there's all kinds of myths, right? This only impacts old fat guys. It's, you know, the reality is sleep apnea starts when we're very, very young. And so my mission is to raise awareness about how serious this condition is and, and how it impacts daily life, right? And so, yeah, I travel around the world telling this story. Oh, good for it's you. Great. Doctor, let me bring you in. Um, to kind of break down what OSA is and what's happening to our bodies when, when we experience that. Right. You know, and you wake up and you're like holding your chest. Right, so OSA is an actual obstruction of your breathing um, while you're sleeping, right? So the brain makes you do things when, when it's not getting oxygen. and. It, it has kinda, that fight or flight exactly. moment. Exactly, it's fight or flight all night for some people. So they're constantly in and out, a deeper sleep to a lighter sleep, deeper sleep to a lighter sleep. What happens is they're not getting enough oxygen and the brain makes you do things like gasp for air or turn on your side mm -hmm. to get your tongue out of your throat. Um, to save your life, really. To save that's your what life. It's doing because the body wants to save itself. That, that's exactly right. The root cause of this typically in, in probably 80% of the people who have OSA is something called micrognathia, which is our jaws are too small. Mm. They, they did not grow out enough. Um, and this device alleviates that and, and in a lot of cases cures it. Let's talk about that device because I know there's traditional treatments like the CPAP machine. A lot of people yeah. have heard of that. A little bulky, a little mm -hmm. uncomfortable. People are not compliant. Let's just be honest. Uh, what is this device and how is it helping uh, patients with OSA? So this device is, it's very easy to use. Mm -hmm. you, you use it in the evening. You, it's an oral device. Like a retainer? Um, like, like, like an old school retainer. Oh, okay, okay. Um, 
you know, it's some people have a top and bottom. Some people just have a top. You put it on at night. You put it on at night and you sleep with it, and you actually get bone growth oh. in the jaws. And as you're getting bone growth, what is it doing to your jaw? And then how does it help alleviate that? You know, and that lack of breathing. Right. So people who are you know, have their jaws that are too small, the soft tissue is pushed back as well. So it opens all of that up and allows you to breathe when hmm. you sleep and during the day as well. What feedback are you getting? Uh, Brian, do you know of any feedback? Uh, do you use it? Anybody that you know? Yeah, so all four of my little kids are, are in it now. Look at that. Uh, uh, in fact, my three-year-old who was in, my, in the bed with my wife that day, when, she, when we had her scanned, she had very little airway. Mm. She had the same cranial facial structure as her mom, and yeah, very little airway. And since, since she went into treatment, her whole world has changed. Can you imagine? Doctor, I can only imagine, I mean, just for his daughter, but for adults who are not sleeping well, yeah. cranky in the morning, irritable, not... Yes, and, and children as well. A host of diseases. Yeah. Uh, it must be helping them as well? Without a doubt. Children and adults, yeah. I, I treat... A, a wide range of age groups with this device. Would you say they're getting uh, their life back? Without a doubt, yeah. Yeah, they, they have more focus and they're more productive. Because um, they're sleeping better. They're sleeping better. Oh, that's fantastic. Uh, for our viewers who like information on the device, gentlemen, where can they go, Brian? So you can visit vivoslife.com. Vivo's or you can com. also visit Dr. Rayo's website at rayodental.com. I, I can't uh, finish by not asking how you're um, How's your daughter today? How oh, is they're she now? doing great. They're doing really good. And your son? Awesome. Fantastic. Awesome. All right, thank you so much for sharing your story. <laughs> thank you. Thanks for having thank us. Thank you for what you're doing. Doctor, thank you for the great information thank on the you. device. And of course, if you'd like more information on the device, you can also just check out our website, thebalancingact.com. <laughs>the last time you went to New York? Uh, early this year. Did you go to Soho? I did not. All right, well, the next time you go to the Big Apple, you got to check out Soho, which, what does it mean, by the way? South of Houston Street, and there you will find a hip destination, the Nomo Soho Hotel. Take a look. Soho has always been home to amazing artists, world-class shopping, dining, and nightlife. And the Nomo Soho Hotel is right in the heart of it all. With amazing views, it's the tallest building in the neighborhood. Nomo Soho has a cool vibe thanks to its stunning decor and artistic legacy. Speaking of art, the hotel has curated collections from modern artists like Bradley Theodore. Guests will love the spacious rooms that feature floor to ceiling windows and luxurious marble showers. Hungry? Nomo Kitchen serves up rustic American cuisine with Mediterranean influences and expertly crafted cocktails. Weekend brunch is a must. Perfect for leisurely visits, weddings, meetings, and private events. It looks nice. It looks cool. I like it. I like it. For more it. information, let's check it out. Nomo Soho. I like the name, too. I do, too. Nomosoho.com, or just go to our website, thebalancingact.com. And don't go away. We'll be right back. Great show on health, let me tell you. Yes, so much to learn. Yeah, have you ever had a bunion? Never. Neither have I. Never want to get one either. Well, if it <laughs> brings me some Jimmy Choo shoes, bring it on. Bring it on, that's right. I'll <laughs> take it for that. <laughs> Remember to head to our Facebook page and our website and follow us on Twitter. That's right. Check out our Instagram at Julian Olga. Thanks for watching, everybody. We will see you next time. So long. <laughs>